Hey there, Wendy with Jazzy Doodle Designs. Today I thought we would color this little cutie from Rachel Mint's uh, friendship book. I'm going to be using Mungio pastels for the background. I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to use Pablo colored pencils for the little image. So let's get started. So I have this cloud stencil from My Favorite Things and we're just gonna experiment. This is really the first time I've used these pastels. They are these um, Mungio pastels. Um, they're really cheap. I got them on Amazon. Look at those beautiful colors. There's 64 colors. Basically, I just did a real quick swatch. Don't even have them in color order. Just however they came in the box is how I swatched them, just so I could get started. I'm going to be using uh, these cotton rounds. I have no idea where I got them from because they were just under my bathroom sink. Does anyone else have a sink like that where you find random useful items? So I'm going to be using those. I'm also going to be using this little brush. I use these a lot. Um, I've got quite a few that I use for my distress inks. I've been doing card making for, I don't know, 20 years. So I have quite a collection of them. I have a set for the distress oxides and then a separate set for the distress ink just because they're different chemical makeups and the opacity of the oxides I think I don't wash I, I guess I should back up I don't wash my brushes after every use I have a brush for every essentially color family so like a light blue will have a brush and a dark blue will have a brush and I just decide when I pull out blue which one and I take just a microfiber towel and I just go like this and with the distress inks they'll come off and you can see when they run clear and that's when I use them. They will stain the bristles over time but I'm not worried about that and I'm not worried about a little bit of transfer but I don't use like an indigo blue with a powder blue. They each would have a separate brush. So um, this is the only brush I have of this size and I think it is going to be the one that'll work the best for this little project. Um, so let's dive down in. As you can see, this stencil is already s slightly stained just from I was just playing around a little bit with it. So in terms of the colors I'm going to use, um, I will try and point out where they come from. They're not really labeled and they're not really in color family or order, but I am thinking probably this blue and maybe a little bit of a blue green type of color. One of these two maybe and um, probably a little bit of this purple will be the ones that I will use uh, for this image. We'll see, but I'm gonna start with that first blue. And basically what I do is, I know you can use a blade. I find that the back of my scissors works just as well. It doesn't harm the scissors and I don't have to worry about cutting my hand off. So um, I just hold it over I hold my stencil kind of where I want it and I just flick a little bit of the powder and this is a little bit of a messy process so I'm going to start with the the pad and I'm just going to rub that in And you can determine how saturated you want the color. Now, I have a little bit of a dark spot there, so I have a kneaded eraser, 
what I do is I just give it a knead and I put my stencil back up and wherever I think I got it just a little maybe too much color I just kind of gently press and that takes a little bit of that off you can roll it if you want let's say that whole thing was a little much and by rolling it you can lighten it just a touch now if i really wanted to i can go in and and do a fairly good job of erasing but i think we're okay now usually i like to wipe my stencil quickly just to make sure i don't have big chunks of uh, color going down and I always try and flip it as you can see these are like wider and then you got a whole different pattern here I just pick whatever pattern I want once again I'm not too worried if I get it a little bit here on the the kite though I will try and avoid it and I want to saturate my color towards the bottom so I kind of put it right there even on, on the stencil and then I can pick it up and just gently get it going here. Once I have the majority of the color where I want it, then I take my little cotton ball and um, smooth it out now I don't really like this so when I need to where you get a little fresh piece these are really messy and it's a good idea to have a damp cloth nearby to get the majority off of your hands. You can even go more aggressive with something like a sand eraser. If you find that, you know, you get, see I'm getting Okay, so let me wipe this so I don't continue to make a mess. And then go in with my cloth and kind of just smooth that out a little bit. I'm going to lighten things up with my kneaded eraser. You can go in and, and fix things. Um, so I didn't really like how this was. So I'm going to take my um, chalk and just go in directly. And just experiment with what works best for you and the image that you're going for. What you want to do is leave a little bit of white between the two though. Um, I don't really recommend going all the way up. But clouds are kind of wispy. So in between time, wipe your stencil and go in for your next layer. I am going to go with a lighter blue. This is this blue, whatever that one is.
So I've taken a paper towel roll. And see, I'm not getting any color off. So I'm ready to go in with this color. I just pick it up on my brush and just gently kind of dab little circular motions are a really good way to blend so it's a, I find it's a little better to get the color on there and try and erase it off than to not have enough color. Now I, what I like to do is I like to go in and just ever so slightly um, just leave a little ridge there and then I go back in with that original blue that I had from the first one and just add ever so lightly just on the edge there. And once again, just and you don't have to do the eraser thing. You might be way better at this than I am and really like your results. Um, clean them off my stencil. I'm going to go back up to this original one and add just, once again, leaving just the finest little ridge there. I am going to go in. You can see the blue coming off. So when I start getting blue, then I go and pick up my color. So I'm gonna go with this pink right here. It's a really bright, almost neon pink. And I'm just gonna get a little on my brush there. And just very gently, I just want it right on the ridge. I don't really want to pull it much up into the cloud itself, although you could. Um, the orange bracelet, by the way, um, my grandson was born last night, McAllen, and that is the bracelet that lets me get back in the hospital without doing all the check-in stuff uh, today when I go. So that's what that is. I just like the looks of that, just a little bit of um, color there. I may even go in and just ever so slightly add it onto this one as well. You just want a tiny hint of color there. I think I'm gonna do one more here and I'm going to use this very light blue. It's almost like a periwinkle. Get that pink 
pink out of the brush. Sorry, I'm out of camera. Down here, I don't want a lot of color because it's getting lower. Picking it up directly from the chalk or from the pastel. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's almost kind of a gray blue. It looks a lot brighter in chalk form. Guys, prepare yourself. This is a messy medium. So now I'm going to go in with this kind of bright green. I'm just going to tap off a little, um, a little more of a muted kind of green. cotton ball just a little bit on my brush there. I'm gonna go into these areas here where it would be a little more saturated. This will give us a nice working background. I'm going to take that lightest blue I am just going along the edges here and just kind of erasing, really lightening up the corners with this kneaded eraser. personal taste. I probably should have left it white. I just I didn't know until I did it. Art is like that and you got to be willing to live with it and work with it. Um, till you get what you like. I always say that art has an ugly face and sometimes that's just, just because you're not done working it and sometimes it's because you do stuff and you don't like it so um, if I can't get this to lighten up in the corners I'm okay with that but if I can if I can get it to lighten up I think I'll like that better. And I'm just kind of going for 
an ovalish. Um, in fact, I think I'm liking just this really light, the lightened clouds. Just like the idea that they kind of disappear from the sides. Um, you know, they just fade off. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot better. Artists vary what each person prefers. Um, but I am really liking the lightness of this and the um, I don't know how the softness I guess is what you would say. So now I'm just kind of going in and touching it up. But I think I'm gonna call that good. I like I like how that turned out. Um, I might take, I have these Q-tips, um, that are kind of pointy there on the end. got these on Amazon. I have like a bazillion of them now. Um, but I didn't pay that much for them and I'll probably go through them because once you... Once you get a color on these, you, you, you can use them somewhat for other colors, but what, the one thing I am going to do is I think I'm going to go in with maybe, let's start with this, maybe a little combination of that blue green and that green. Just ever so lightly. Just put a little hint of a darker green in there. I just really like how the kneaded eraser kind of mutes it. You get that initial pop, but then it mutes it when you kind of wipe it off. So, let's stop for now.